we welcome you into Probst Arena here at the Von Braun Center in Huntsville, Alabama for the Conference USA Women's Basketball Championship on the Gamecock Sports Network. I'm Logan Maddox and I'll be with you for this quarterfinal showdown as Jacksonville State, the five seed in this year's tournament, will take on the fourth seeded Lady Texters of Louisiana Tech as they begin their journey this week in Huntsville. Everyone, we appreciate you joining us on this Thursday morning. You know, 11.30 a.m. time slot on Thursday morning. Despite that, a decent crowd for Jack State and an even bigger crowd, honestly, for La Tech. But the Gamecocks will try to overcome that in their home state as they look to knock off a team that they couldn't in two showdowns with in the regular season in the Lady Texters. Jacksonville State fell on the road in Ruston 67 to 53 in mid-January, then lost, I mean, right around a month ago today at home against Louisiana Tech 61 to 51. Just could not slow down a high-flying Lady Texters offense and for the most part couldn't shoot against a smothering defense for Louisiana Tech. They'll try to put that behind them as they look for their first ever postseason win in Conference USA play here in their first season as a member of the CUSA. It's the third meeting all time and this season between the two teams that you know prior to this year have had no history, but the first two games got a little chippy at times. These are two teams that certainly match up pretty well as the first two games were rather close until La Tech pulled away late. But again, it was the Jack State offense struggles that led to those two losses to the Lady Texters. Jack State shot just 17 of 49 from the field in the first showdown in the Bayou State. And then they shot 30.4%, just made three threes in their second loss to Louisiana Tech earlier this season. Now Jacksonville State coming into this tournament, the five seed after surviving an overtime thriller in their last game last Saturday. It was on senior day against Sam Houston and Jack State led by double digits in the final couple minutes before the Bearcats rallied to force an extra period. But fortunately, Jack State outscored them 13 to nine in the last period to secure an exhilarating 74 to 70 triumph. Couple of big performances in that game. Of course, Madison McCoy, the senior from Knoxville, Tennessee, who has made great strides this season. She had a career high 19 points and a career high nine boards. Crystal Eisen had a 14.10 rebound double-double, the first double-double of her Jacksonville State career. And junior forward Brianna Rhodes had 16 points, six rebounds, and two steals in that win against Sam Houston. As we wrap up the regular season, Rhodes is still the team's leader in scoring and rebounds. She comes into this game 8.4 points per game and 4.7 rebounds per game. Crystal Eisen just behind her with eight points, and Rachel Johnson third on the team with 6.1 points per game. And in rebounding, it's Rhodes, then Asia Barkley, who's got 4.4 rebounds per game, and then Maya Barnes, who's got 4.1 rebounds per game. Mentioned that it's the third showdown between Jack State and La Tech all time. It's the fourth between head coach Rick Petrie and the Lady Texters, mentioned in both of the previous meetings this year. But Rick Petrie coached against them in his first season as a collegiate head coach way back in 2000, 2001, when he was at South Alabama. His Jaguars team made the trip out to Ruston and lost 71 to 46 in conference play back then in the Sun Belt. Lady Texter head coach currently, Brooke Storer was then a junior guard for the Lady Texter. She was a star of a player. She had 15 points and six rebounds. And she, of course, led her team to two wins in the regular season this year. So Petrie will try to get one back on Storer and the Lady Texters today. Madison McCoy had that big senior day career day and she topped the Big milestone with that 19 point game. She's now over 300 career points in three years at Jack State. That comes after topping 300 career rebounds earlier this year as well. Jacksonville State under head coach Rick Petrie's five and eight in conference tournament games. Last year, of course, they fell in the first round of the A-Sun tournament to rival Kennesaw State. 82-73 was the final score in that game up in Lynchburg, Virginia. Under Petrie though, the team has had success in postseason games, they made runs to the A-Sun Finals in 2021-22 and twice made it to the Ohio Valley Conference semifinals in 2013-14 and 2017-18. And up in Huntsville, Jack State playing in a familiar place. It's been a few years, but the Gamecocks have had plenty of games up here in Madison County. They're 15 and 10 all time in Huntsville. Most of those games against Alabama A&M and Alabama Huntsville in their Division II days. The last time Jack State lost here in Huntsville, Alabama was November 22, 2008, a 13-point road loss to Alabama A&M. And here's to hoping that they can get another win up here in North Alabama today as they take on Louisiana Tech. 
The starting lineup's already put into the stat system, and we'll share them with you here on the Gamecock Sports Network. For Jacksonville State, it's the same starting lineup that we've seen really for the past month or so, and it's a lineup that's led to plenty of success for the Gamecocks, who finished winner six of their last ten games in conference play. Rachel Johnson, the graduate guard from Eufaula, a transfer from Georgia Southern, is back in the starting lineup. 6.1 points, four rebounds, and one assist per game for the former Eufaula standout. Elsie Harris, a redshirt junior and JUCO transfer from Mississippi Gulf Coast, getting the start at point guard today, but expect to see Samaya Steele, who's from nearby Hazel Green. We actually had the chance to check out her old stomping grounds as we went up to Hazel Green High School yesterday for shoot around, but Elsie Harris is in the starting lineup. This year, Harris with four points, one and a half rebounds, and two assists per game in the one guard role. Crystal Ison starting for Jack State at shooting guard. She's coming in averaging eight points, three and a half rebounds, and one and a half assists per game. Ison, a junior from Tacoma, Washington, in her first season at Jack State after transferring from Eastern Arizona. Brianna Rhodes, number 10, the junior forward from Montgomery, leading scorer and rebounder, starting in this game, her 28th game played for Jack State this year. Correction, 29th, she has played in and started every game for the Red and White this season. 8.4 points, 4.7 rebounds for Rhodes this year. And the final starter for Jack State coming off a career game, Maddie's back in the starting lineup, Madison McCoy, the six-foot senior forward from Knoxville, Tennessee, playing in her final collegiate game. 5.7 rebounds, or excuse me, 5.7 points, four rebounds per game for McCoy in her third season at Jack State after transferring from Walter State Community College. And the starters for the Lady Texters as Jacksonville State makes their way out to a roarous crowd here at Probst Arena. Starters go like this for La Tech. Robin Lee is getting the start. The junior from Moss Point, Mississippi has put up eight and a half points and four rebounds per game. Also averaging one and a half assists per game this year for the Lady Texters. Salma Bates, a senior guard from Kenner, Louisiana and a transfer from Tulane. Second leading scorer on the team, 10.2 points this year, leading the team in assists, two and a half and two and a half rebounds as well for Bates. Gianna Morris, who found herself on the All-Conference USA freshman team, she's in the starting lineup, 6.6 .6 points, 3.1 rebounds for Gianna, the freshman from Sherwood, Arkansas. Sylvia Nativi starting for the Lady Texters, the six-foot junior guard from Ferrara, Italy. 5.8 points, three and a half rebounds, and three assists per game for her. And then finally, the standout for La Tech, Anna Lara Robertson, who absolutely feasted on Jack State the first two games this year, averaged 20 points against Jack State, three rebounds, or rather four rebounds per game against the Gamecocks in the previous two meetings. Anna Lara Robertson, a 6'3 forward, a senior from Ruston. She comes in on the year averaging 12.2 points and a team high five rebounds per game. For Jacksonville State, they're led by 11th year head coach Rick Petrie. He's assisted by 11th year assistant coach Eric Wise. First year assistants, Destiny Thomas and Kayvon Towns. Director of basketball ops, Harley Cook and graduate assistant Preston Odom. And the Lady Texters make their way out onto the floor. La Tech led by eighth year head coach Brooke Storr and assistant coaches Nitra Perry, Tez Dumars, and Scott Storr. La Tech bands in attendance along with Jack State's pep band Hardcore. La Tech plays on their fight song as Jack State gets a few last minute shots up here at the Von Braun Center, Probst Arena in Huntsville. We're gonna step aside here on the Gamecock Sports Network. We'll come back in about four minutes for tip off. Jacksonville State, the five seed and the four seed La Tech Lady Textures here in the CUSA quarterfinals. Stay with us live on YouTube, the Gamecock Sports Network. Be back in just a moment.
welcome you back to Huntsville, Alabama. The sounds of hardcore, the Jacksonville State Pep Band. As we return here on the Gamecock Sports Network on this Thursday morning in Madison County. Jack State playing in the Conference USA quarterfinals. The five-seed Gamecocks and the four-seeded Louisiana Tech Lady Texters. Jack State 12 and 16 on the year, seven and nine in conference play, but talking with head coach Rick Petrie, extremely impressed with the team's finish. Started one and five in league action, won six of their last 10 to finish tied for fourth in their first year in Conference USA. I mean, all things considered, you gotta count that a win. Lady Texters 13 and 18 overall, they are seven and nine. They had a rough non-conference slate, played some really good teams but uh, really hit their stride in conference play. And uh, the lights go dark here at Probst Arena as we get set for the starting lineups. Gamecocks, the visiting team, they'll be the first out. And of course, Rachel Johnson, number zero for Jack State, jogs out onto the floor first. After her is the point guard, Elsie Harris, Richard Jr. from Mobile in the starting lineup. Brianna Rhodes follows her, another junior who will be back next season for Jacksonville State. Crystal Ison follows her. Juco transfer, Juco heavy team for Jack State, but those Juco stars have made a big difference. And there's another one, the senior from Knoxville, Madison McCoy, last out for the Gamecocks. Jacksonville State, the visiting team wearing their road red unis. It's a red top and red shorts with Jacksonville State spelled out on the front in white letters, black term around the letters and numbers. White dashes down the side of the uniform with the Gamecock logo on the five. And Pep Band Hardcore plays on as we wait for the announcement of the starters for Louisiana Tech. The lights go down again here in Huntsville. Boo Birds out as a Jack State heavy crowd now that Pep Band has got in. And Louisiana Tech starters come out. I mentioned their starters, Robin Lee, Salma Bates, Gianna Morris, Sylvia Nativi, and Anna Laura Robertson. Robertson and Bates, first team all conference. Well, Bates, second team all conference, and Gianna Morris, conference all freshman team. Louisiana Tech, the Lady Texters wearing their home white unis. The baby blue down the side of the uniform as their last starter comes out. On the back, he's got their last name and the number in red. On the front, Lady Texters in script in the baby blue, almost like Carolina blue that Louisiana Tech's women's basketball team is known for. A lot of history in their program, but a lot of history for the Gamecocks as well, and they look to get their first ever postseason win as a member of Conference USA today. Both teams in their huddle as we get closer and closer to the start of this game. Winner of this game will advance to play top-seeded Middle Tennessee tomorrow in the semifinals. That game would start at 5.30 p.m. Winner of that game advances to the championship on Saturday here at Probst Arena. The Gamecocks come out of the huddle, and the starters are in their own huddle in the corner of the floor. Nice crowd for this first game today. Louisiana Tech faithful made the trip out from the Bayou State. Jack State only about a two-hour drive from Calhoun County and a decent contingency of fans, but with hardcore, it sounds even louder. Good amount of Jack State fans behind us as well. Anna Laura Robertson jumping at the line for La Tech, the 6'3 senior. She'll go up against the six foot junior for Jacksonville State, Brianna Rhodes. Referee takes it to center court. Ball's in the air and it's won by the Lady Texters. They just save it from going out of bounds. Salma Bates saves it, it goes over to the freshman. Gianna Morris, and we are underway in Huntsville. To the corner, Robin Lee, opposite corner, Salma Bates driving baseline, layup short, tipped and rebounded by Jacksonville State. 
Stop on the first possession. Here comes the Gamecocks. Down the floor, it's Crystal Ison. Stops at the baseline, feeds to Harris in the corner. Elsie passes off to Rhodes. Now back outside to Ison. To the elbow, Brianna drives, layup. Too much on it. And rebounded by the Lady Texters. Salma Bates boxes out that time. The guard takes it down the floor for La Tech. To the right wing, it's Morris once again. And now to Lee straight away. Corner three, Bates, three ball off the iron and caught at the baseline by Madison McCoy. Gives off to Elsie Harris in transition. Pass back on the wing to Madison. McCoy driving right side, high off the glass, no good, but the putback rolls in from Brianna Rhodes. Right place, right time for Bree and Jacksonville State strikes first, two nothing, a minute in. La Tech looking for a response. Robertson almost had it stripped away. Passes out to Gianna Morris in the paint. Now in the corner, a three for Nativi. Off the back of the iron, but rebounded by them until it was tipped out by Elsie Harris. Gamecocks two, Lady Texters nothing. 8.33 to go in this opening period in the quarterfinal round. TV has it just inside the arc, and it's stolen. Threw it right to Madison McCoy. The TV trips. Now the Gamecocks have numbers. Elsie Harris brings it up. Guarded by Lee. She'll have to slow down, and that allows the TV to catch up. Over to Johnson for three. No dice on the trade. Falls to the Lady Texters once again. Lee with the board. Takes it all the way. Short jumper. Goes in. Nails it from the free throw line, and we're tied at two. Two minutes in. Elsie Harris dribbling left to right, gives off on the left wing to Brianna Rhodes, who backs down Robertson, tries an awkward layup, and it won't spin in. Rhodes asks for a foul, didn't get it. Down the floor to Nativi, she'll stop in the paint, has to do something with it, tosses out to Bates. In the corner, a three, Robin Lee banks it in off the glass. And La Tech takes a 5-2 lead, five in a row for the Lady Texters. Lucky bounce off the backboard that time. They lead it by three. Harris forces a pass inside and a reach in called on Louisiana Tech. Was looking for Madison McCoy, but they are going to get Robin Lee, junior from Moss Point High School in the Magnolia State. First on her first team foul. Comes with 7.44 to go in the opening period. Just a pass in for Jacksonville State. It'll be Harris at the baseline, not far from the backboard. Elsie gives in a high pass to Brianna. She'll dart inside, and it's ripped away, and then they call a charge on Bree. That went about as bad as it could have went for Jack State. Pulled out of her hands by Kate Thompson, the Wisconsin transfer, and then she barreled into the guard that was behind her. Gamecocks give it over, and now one foul apiece. Morris standing near the CUSA logo at midcourt. They've done a great job at Probst Arena this week, by the way, as an offensive foul is going to give it right back to the red and white. I think that might have been Thompson, who had had the great steal on the last end. She knocked over Brianna Rhodes down low. Back to the Gamecocks, trailing by three, two and a half minutes in. Harris and another whistle, and that's going to be a defensive foul on Louisiana Tech. And this time they're going to get number 10, Bates. Salma Bates, 5'7", senior from Kenner, Louisiana. Speedy guard does it all for this Lady Texter team. Three off the inbound for Elsie Harris. No chance that time, way too much on it. Airballed and caught by the Lady Texters. Salma Bates. Opposite corner, three, got it. Another tray falls for La Tech, Paris Guillory, another one of their all-conference freshman players. Elsie Harris drives in, misses a layup, and the Lady Texters get it right back up by six. Here they come in the lane, Morris, and she was clotheslined by Brianna Rhodes. That'll be a shooting foul and two free throws for Louisiana Tech here, and timeout is gonna be taken by Jacksonville State. 
8-0 scoring run for Louisiana Tech, 6.56 to go in the first, and we'll step aside with them here on the Gamecock Sports Network. Stay with us, Jack State down by six. And we're back with you here in Huntsville. 6.56 to go in the first period. Jacksonville State trails at 8 to 2, and a couple of free throws coming up for the Lady Texters after a shooting foul on Brianna Rhodes. That was a costly second on the junior, and she is taking a seat now. Asia Barkley, the six foot junior forward from Aniston, checks in in her place. New face in there for La Tech. That's Amaya Brandon, the junior from Plano, Texas. Comes in to give the TV a breather. Couple of free throws for Gianna Morris as she heads to the line. Morris, freshman from Sylvian Hills High School in the natural state, the free throws up and in. Morris has started all 32 games this year for Louisiana Tech, shooting 74% at the line this season. And her second freebie goes in as well. It's a 10-0 scoring run for La Tech over the last 70 seconds. 10 to two, your score, Jack State trails it. Inbounds pass goes to the Metro Huntsville native, Samaya Steele, who breaks around a man press, gets it up across the timeline. Sophomore bounces it left wing to Asia Barkley, now outside to Madison McCoy. McCoy to the elbow, spins, gives to Barkley straight away. Passing around, but the defense all over her. It's to McCoy with eight on the shot clock, driving layup, won't fall. Just not getting the lucky bounces this time, and. Louisiana Tech boxes out. The TV checks back in, gives over to Brandon. Now in the corner, this is Paris Guillory. Morris down the center of the lane, back to Guillory on the wing. Spinning down low, ice and honor. Tries a layup and it bounces in. Another shot goes for La Tech. They've made four in a row and they've scored 12 unanswered. Four minutes in, 12 to two, Lady Texters. They have come out on fire here in Huntsville. Crystal Ison 
To the right of the timeline, drives in, and she draws a shooting foul, looking to end this scoreless drought. They'll get Sylvia a TV with a push that time. They show a replay of that tough shot that Paris Guillory made. Credit where it's due. Louisiana Tech's making the plays right now, but a chance for Crystal Ison to cut into this deficit. First free throw from the junior is up and off to the left. Remember, you can watch this game live on ESPN Plus for those wanting to catch the video stream. Ison makes the second one, and it's 12 to three. That ends a 12-0 run over the last couple minutes. Big thank you to everybody tuning in on this Thursday morning here in Huntsville, Alabama. Salma Bates swings it right side for Sylvia Nativi, the Italian, working against Rachel Johnson. They'll go left side for Guillory, the freshman. She's guarded step for step by Samaya Steele. Has it on the left wing, now back over to TV. Inside for Annalar Robertson, beat the defender, layup goes. Talked with head coach Rick Petrie and a few members of the staff this week. How do you stop Annalar Robertson? He said, you just can't let her catch the ball. Once she's got the ball, it's too late. She's got her first points of the day. 14 to three, a football score. Rachel Johnson driving baseline and a charge. Tried to find Ison in the opposite corner. She did, but she ran over a defender first. With 5.13 to go in this opening frame, Louisiana Tech takes back over up by 11. Gamecocks have not made a shot over the last three and a half minutes. They'll look for a stop here. Bates, the floor general, brings it up for La Tech. Had a big game in the game in Jacksonville this year. The TV on the right side gets around Rachel Johnson. Passes to Brandon. Now left wing back to Bates. Going for Robertson and it's stolen this time. Asia Barkley jumped the passing lane. The Aniston High School product gives the head to the Alabama State transfer, Samaya Steele. Steele right side hands it off to Crystal Ison. Ison inside the arc. She need a shot to fall here to kind of turn around the tides. Ison open on the wing, puts up a three in and out. And back over to Louisiana Tech. Guillory comes away with the board. She'll take it all the way down. Freshman from Lake Charles, Louisiana, swings at the Bates. Now back over near side for Robertson. The six foot three senior to Nativi, 13 on the shot clock. Down low for Robertson, spins against Barkley, had it knocked out of her hands, but right to Nativi. Put back no good and saved by Rachel Johnson. Jacksonville State will get it. Samaya Steele in transition. Gives in the corner to Ison. Crystal drives, layup. No dice again. Can't buy a bucket right now. Jack State shooting one of 10 from the field. Brandon, a high pass to the point right to Salma Bates. They start the play with 15 on the shot clock. The TV near side over to Robertson straight away. Left side with, with 10 on the shot clock. A three for Bates off the back of the iron and caught midair by Crystal Ison. She'll drag down the right sideline, stop on the wing. Now pass over to Samaya Steele. Need a shot, any shot here, trailing 14 to three. 320 and ticking in the first. Steele gets a screen. Samaya outside to Maya Barnes who checked in. Hand off to Ice and Crystal lost it, picks it back up. Lost it again and it's out of bounds off her. Shot clock was winding down and another turnover against Jacksonville State, their third already. That's one way that the Gamecocks have impressed down the stretch of this season. You know, they struggled early on in conference play with turnovers, average like 14 a game, which is very unlike a Petrie coach team, but they've knocked those number, numbers down of late. The defense has been generating points off turnovers, but so far none. Mackenzie Worm, the tall forward for Louisiana Tech's got it. She'll hand it off at the free throw line to Nativi. Now a pass back outside to Salma Bates. Driving down low and she'll get called for a charge. Shaquise May sent sliding across the floor here at Probst Arena. Good job by the junior out of Atlanta to draw that foul. Gamecocks will take back over on the fifth team foul against La Tech. So Jack stayed in the bonus for the last 250. Down by 11, 14 to three. 
Samaya passes to Maya Barnes on the left wing. Now back right side for Barkley. Asia gives in the corner. Maya's wide open tray. Yes! Maya Barnes with a three ball to end the scoreless drought. And Jack State's down just eight, 14 to six. First three of the game for the red and white. Robin Lee, layup goes. Maya Barnes got caught jumping early that time. And it's a 10 point difference again, 16 6. Samaya so Steele at the edge of the midcourt logo. Gives to Barkley right side. Asia drives, beat the defender, but McKenzie Worm blocks it out of bounds. That's what length can do for you. The six foot four junior, McKenzie Worm, slapped that one out of bounds and into the Louisiana Tech cheerleaders. Samaya Steele gives in at the wing to Brooklyn McDaniel, sophomore from Heflin who's come into the game. She'll try a layup and it's blocked by Worm too, nothing happening. Anya Bukovic with a rebound down the floor to Robin Lee. Straight away, this is Nativi driving and her shot rolls in. Two more for Louisiana Tech, they now lead it 18 to six. With under 100 seconds remaining in this first period. Samaya Steele, the hazel green star, two-time Miss Basketball here in Alabama, gives over to Asia Barkley. Looping left side, layup blocked again by Worm and out of bounds off of Barkley. You know, in the first few games we saw that from Robertson, we didn't see it from McKenzie Worm. But Worm has checked in and played just fine, the junior from Allen, Texas. Back to the Lady Texters who lead it by a dozen with 120 remaining in the first. Lee, a pass to Worm, right near the three-point stripe, and she went inside and had it stolen, tipped and caught by Maya Barnes. Barnes hands it off to Steele, now in the corner, Madison McCoy faked a shot, takes it in, and she has it rejected too. Sylvia TV came away with it, I'm sure Worm got a hand on that one as well. Bukovic underneath, and has to pass out. It's caught on the wing. And a driving layup missed by Gianna Morris. It was stripped out of her hands by McDaniel. Ahead to Shaquise May, opposite corner, Madison McCoy. Now on the wing, Maya Barnes back in the corner to McCoy. Maddie's three is off the rim. And LaTex got it with 33 to go in the period. Lady Texters lead 18-6. About a six second difference between the shot and game clocks as we are getting close to ending this first period. Robin Lee on the wing, Madison McCoy guarding her. Swings it to Morris straight away. She'll step to the elbow, walk it to the baseline and pass back out to Lee. Three on the shot clock, spins in the paint, jumper goes. Five seconds to play in the period. Gives in to Samaya Steele, takes it to half court, puts up a heave and it's well short. That takes us to the second period, not the start that the Gamecocks were hoping for. Louisiana Tech leads it 20 to six. They end the period on a 20 to four scoring run and a 6-0 run over the last two minutes. We'll step aside for just a moment, come back with the second period here on the Gamecocks Sports Network.
not the start that the red and white were hoping for here in Huntsville to say the very least. Louisiana Tech 20 and Jacksonville State 6 through one period of play. Still a lot of basketball left to be played here in the Rocket City. And the Gamecocks will have the ball as we start the second frame. It'll be Madison McCoy giving it in to Samaya Steele. And the clock starts a rolling here in the second. Samaya sets up shop on the left wing here in the Von Braun Center. Over to Maya Barnes, spinning inside, lost her footing and threw it into the Louisiana Tech band. Was going up against Annalar Robertson and chose the right way to spin to deke her out, but lost her footing. And it's back to the Lady Texters who trail by, or who lead by 14. This is Paris Guillory, one of their stellar freshmen, swinging it left side for Anya Bukovic. Bukovic kicks it to the baseline, long two, and Amaya Brandon sinks it. First points of the day for Brandon. Another Lone Star State native on this team, and it's a 16-point lead for Louisiana Tech, their largest of the game. Steele bounces one for McCoy to the elbow, now to the corner. Maya Barnes spinning in, has to stop, has an open lane, floater off the glass, rolls off the rim. Been that kind of day so far. Jack State shooting 10% from the field. Bukovic will try her hand at a layup, hits off the back. Caught by Samaya Steele, who takes it down the floor in transition. Gives it on the wing to Brooklyn McDaniel, tries a three, and it's just off the mark. Louisiana Tech's rebound down the floor. That's Gianna Morris who got the rebound and raced down. Outside to Guillory, open three, and she got it. Louisiana Tech is putting it on the Gamecocks right now, 25 to six, and head coach Rick Petrie is gonna call timeout early in this second period. 8.31 to go. La Tech leads it by 19 here in the first half. It has been a rough one to say the least to begin. I mean, still a lot of time left, but these adjustments need to, meet, need to be made expeditiously if you're Jacksonville State. Of course, the women's team, the only team for the Red and White still alive in the tournament. The men fell in the first round back on uh, Tuesday against FIU, the nine-seeded Panthers with a 76-67 win. Hate to see that they were defeated, but uh, on to next year for Ray Harper's squad and bringing back a lot of key pieces. Excited to see what the Gamecocks can do in 24-25. Jacksonville State trying to avoid a similar fate here in Huntsville, trying to avoid going 0-1 here in the Rocket City. We'll step aside, we're in a media timeout. 8.31 to go in the half, Louisiana Tech 25, Jack State 6.
Eight minutes, 31 seconds left here in the second period. Jacksonville State trails La Tech 25 to six here in the Conference USA quarterfinals from Probst Arena at the Von Braun Center in Huntsville. Fifth seeded Gamecocks, fourth seeded Lady Textures. And Brooklyn McDaniel will be the passer as we get back to play with eight and a half to go. To Samaya Steele, she'll cross half court. Steele, the sophomore from nearby Meridianville, gives left side to Shaquise May. Shaquise jumps in the lane, spin around, layup goes, but she took that extra step, and they whistle her for a travel. Gamecocks will make a sub as May checks out. Crystal Ison comes right in. That goes in as the fifth turnover for Jacksonville State. They're winning the turnover battle, six turnovers for the Lady Textures right now. But no shots falling, Jack State 10% from the field. Need a stop here, Robin Lee goes left wing for Guillory, now passes in the corner for Morris. To the star player, Robertson, the hometown product. Jumper off to the right, but an offensive board for Lee, and they'll restart the play. Lee looking for Robertson, they'll pass it to her near the baseline. Steps into the paint, shot goes this time. Robertson two for two from the field. As a team, Louisiana Tech shooting north of 60%. They lead 27-6, biggest lead. Brooklyn McDaniel, top of the key, trying to create some space, and she has it stolen. Knocked away by Guillory, picked up by Brannon. All the way, Amaya Brannon, and then she has it stolen right back by McCoy. Madison down the left side. She'll take it in the paint, kick it outside, a three for Ison. Too much on it, but recovered by Samaya. Back to Crystal, one-on-one -on -one against Lee, gives in the corner to Steele. Drives in, kicks it out the last moment to Maya Barnes. Now on the right side, it's Ison. Ducking in, layup good, and a block on La Tech. Count the basket. Just need a break if you're Jacksonville State, that's a good start. 27 to eight with 7.02 to go here in the half. And a chance for a three point play for Crystal Ison, who's one for two at the line. Crystal product of Lincoln High School up in Washington. 69% free throw shooter in the regular season. As Robertson checks out for La Tech, she makes the free throw. McKenzie Worm back in for Louisiana Tech. But I mean, you don't breathe much easier for Jack State. She's got four blocks already. Sylvia TV, a chest pass to Lee. Now to the freshman Morris. Back over to Robin Lee. Takes it down left side. Now in the corner, a three. Too short this time by Guillory. Maya Barnes comes down with a rebound. Takes it down the court, gives to Steele. Samaya crosses around the defender, gives back to Barnes straight away. Barnes in the paint, passes out, now back to Maya. Across the floor to Ison on the wing. Crystal is tripped up by the defender, but they'll call the charge on her. And Petrie asking to check with the other official who called it on the defense. The stripes will converge at half court. The official who called it for La Tech was closer. They'll go with him, and it's a charge on Ison. 27 to nine, your score, Louisiana Tech leading, 6.22 to go in the half. And Lady Textures basketball. The TV stands on the wing. Gives left side for Guillory. Now to Morris. A screen from Worm. Passes outside Guillory's way. Now to Lee on the left wing and a foul, no, a three second call on McKenzie Worm. So Jacksonville State will take over. Down by 18 with six to go in the half. Samaya Steele brings it up center court. Goes to the right side, gets a screen, passes back for Barnes, a three. Oh, in and out. Samaya almost got the rebound, but Louisiana Tech got it. Then it's almost stolen, but McKenzie Worm grabs it and advances it. Ahead to Gianna Morris, layup good. Heck of a play by the freshman.
drove around a couple of defenders, and an awkward shot goes in, 29-9. Maya Barnes and a stoppage of play. As the officials are going to meet, and a timeout is going to be taken on the floor. 5.26 to go here in the half. Jacksonville State down by 20, 29-9, and they're going to take another look at that replay as has been requested. So that's what this break is for. We'll step aside as they take another look at it. 5.26 to go in the half, 29-9. So I believe what we were looking at as we come back to play was whether or not Gianna Morris traveled, perhaps. But either way, the call is confirmed. So we're good. Nothing changes. And Jack State's going to pass it out the baseline. Elsie Harris gives it in. And Crystal Ison is fouled just as she catches it by Paris Guillory. And Brooke Storr, the head coach for Louisiana Tech, was trying to ask if that was five seconds or not. But. That won't be the call. Instead, Louisiana Tech gets their second team foul, the first on the freshman, Guillory. They give it in to Elsie Harris. Point guard gives it right side to Rachel Johnson, fakes out a defender, tries a three. It's no good. Rebounded by Maya Barnes, back outside McCoy. Over to Elsie. She'll try, Trey, and she'll make it. Elsie Harris, first points of the day. Now a stoppage of play. Officials are pointing. I think Crystal Ison's got a cut on her leg, so she'll have to check out for some blood. She's going to stay on the sideline. They're just going to apply a Band-Aid and keep her in. 29-12 after a three-pointer from Elsie Harris. We've seen Elsie do a good job dishing out the ball. She hasn't been scoring a ton here in conference play, but we know that she can put up some points. She had a big game against UAB back in non-conference action, had 23 points and eight rebounds against the Blazers. Maybe it's playing on the road here in her home state. Hopefully she can get some more buckets and get Jack State into this one. They're down 17, 29 to 12. And Laura Robertson checks back into the game for the Lady Texters. The crowd starts to get back into it here. Harris Guillory on the left wing. To the right side to Robin Lee. Straight away, Gianna Morris, Harris shading her. In the corner to Guillory. 10 on the shot clock. Guillory to Morris. To Robertson at the elbow. Opposite corner three and a TV air ball. And Jack State gets the rebound. Crystal Ison crosses up two defenders, passes off to Barnes. Maya backing down to TV, spins. Passes outside to Harris. Now back to Maya. Barnes. To Ison, Crystal, left wing, swings it to McCoy, back Crystal's way. Seven on the shot clock, she's tripped. Passes in the corner for Maya. Spins at the baseline layup, no good. Rebounded by Rachel, but then a ball on the floor 
is recovered by Louisiana Tech. And Johnson called for reaching in, racing up the floor. 4.09 to go until halftime. 29-12, Louisiana Tech leads it. Here are the quarterfinals of the Conference USA Women's Basketball Championship. Lady Textures to pass in right in front of the Jack State bench after a foul on Rachel Johnson, her second, team second. And TV catches the inbound pass. Gives to Gianna Morris. Now near side, it's Paris Guillory. Back to Morris on the left wing, driving in, lost the ball. Robertson recovers, put back no good. Rachel Johnson grabs the board, takes it all the way down the center of the floor, layup, got it. Rachel Johnson with her first make from the field today, and it's 29 to 14. Gamecocks trying for another stop here against Robertson. She spins, had it blocked by Barnes. Over to Elsie Harris. Elsie fakes out a defender, corner three, Rachel off the back of the rim. And the Lady Texters grab the ball and they're gonna slow down the pace a bit. They lead it by 15, 29 to 14. 3.13 to go in this second quarter. Gamecock crowd coming alive here in Huntsville. Robin Lee stands on the wing, gives over to Nativi. Morris catches it on the left wing. Down low to Robertson. And she throws it out of bounds, but it was tipped by Maya Barnes, who had a hand on it the whole way. Barnes, great job coming in. Some good minutes there, and she'll take a seat. She is exhausted. Asia Barkley comes in to replace her. Bukovic. The passer for La Tech gives in to Robertson. Shot off the catch, no good. And grabbed by Ison. Crystal races down, gives in the corner to Elsie. Step back three, yes! Elsie Harris from the corner. She's got six, and now timeout taken by the Lady Texters. Giving these Jack State fans a reason to get loud here in Huntsville. 30-second timeout, we'll keep it here. 2.36 to go until halftime, 29-17. Jack State down by a dozen. This is not the only game going on right now as we take a look at other conference tournament matchups on the women's side. Alcorn State leading Southern Louisiana in the SWAC tournament quarterfinals, 31-27. That's midway through the third quarter. They're also in the third in the MEAC tournament. Maryland Eastern Shore trailing Coppin State 35-29. It's a 10-point Campbell lead in the CAA Championship second round. They're hosting Elon. We saw Campbell last year in Las Vegas. Sienna leading Mount St. Mary's in the MAAC Championship quarterfinal, 16-10 in the first. And Southern Illinois an early one-point lead over Indiana State in the Missouri Valley Tournament first round. Whistled back into play, Anya Bukovic gives it in to Gianna Morris. Back to Bukovic on the right wing. If you'll remember, she had like 17 points against Jack State in the first game. And she's called for a charge as she runs over Elsie Harris. Elsie making plays on both ends of the floor during this 8-0 scoring run for the Gamecocks. And the scoreless drought will continue for La Tech as Madison McCoy bounces it in to the junior point guard Harris. 2.20 and ticking until halftime. Elsie gives left wing for Madison McCoy. Back to Barkley right side. Asia, not guarded, but nobody coming around to help her. She'll hand it off to Ison. Crystal to Rachel on the wing. Driving, Johnson layup short. And Robertson comes down with that rebound. Two minutes till halftime. Robin Lee inside the arc. Passes outside a three for Morris. Off the glass, no good. Asia Barkley grabs it. Over to Harris. Elsie slows it down a bit. Gives to Ison on the wing, now to Barkley. Asia, the junior from Shelton State, passes off to Ison. Crystal driving and throws it right to La Tech. Intercepted by Robin Lee, just a good play. 
and she lost it. She has to pass ahead. Anya Bukovic grabs it. They cross the timeline with 1.27 to go. On the left wing, Gianna Morris passes to Robin Lee straight away and out of Brandon. Back Morris's direction. 1.13 to go till halftime. Gianna Morris in the corner for Lee. Robin Lee charges. That looked like a running back that time. She trucked Crystal Eisen. And Jacksonville State will take right back over, trying to extend this 8-0 scoring run. One oh nine to play until halftime. Jacksonville State down 12, 29-17. But eight unanswered for the Gamecocks. Elsie Harris hit a couple threes this period. Passes outside to a wide open Maddie McCoy, but she's too short on the three ball. Lady Texters grab it. Going down the left sideline, it's Lee. Pass in the corner for Amaya Brandon. Harris Guillory comes open, and a three second call on Anilar Robertson. Second three second violation on the Lady Texters today. Under a minute to go, 43 seconds to be exact until halftime. 18 seconds between the game and shot clocks. Rather, 15 seconds. Harris to McCoy on the right wing. Down low, Rachel Johnson. Elsie trying to make a play. Corner three, just off the rim. She got fouled, nothing called. Louisiana Tech grabs the ball, and the shot clock goes dark here in the second period. 18 seconds. Gianna Morris at the logo. Passes off to Brandon, 12 seconds to go. The TV in the corner, 10 seconds to Brandon. Open three with eight to play off the rim, rebounded by Ison. Four seconds to go, Crystal to half court. Down the floor all the way, layup at the horn, got it! And Crystal Ison caps off a 10-0 scoring run for Jacksonville State to end the first half of play. What a job that time. Good last defensive possession despite the open shot from Brandon. Jack State boxes out that time. Ison grabs the rebound. No hesitation, goes coast to coast to beat the buzzer. And Jacksonville State trails it at halftime, 29-19, but a bit different of a feel than about five minutes ago as Jack State ends the half on a 10-0 scoring run over the last five and change. We'll do this, we'll take a timeout. We'll come back with some halftime stats and analysis. We'll also preview the rest of this week's tournament here in Huntsville. But at the break, in the Rocket City, Jacksonville State trails at 29 to 19.
We're back with you here in Huntsville. It's halftime in the Rocket City, Jacksonville State. Trails Louisiana Tech 29 to 19. But again, as I said before we broke away, feels a little bit different uh, than it did when Jack State was down by 20. You know, momentum definitely swung in favor of the Gamecocks late in the first half. But can they continue that, continue to work down this deficit as they come back to play in half number two? Looking at scoring in the first half for the red and white, leading scorer right now is Elsie Harris. She hit a pair of threes in that second period. She's got six points in the first half. Uh, three points for Crystal Ison, who hit her first field goal there as time was expiring in the second period. Went court or went uh, one end to the other, coast to coast, and hit a buzzer beating layup. She has three points, four rebounds, and a couple of assists in the first half of play. Samaya Steele with three points, completed a three-point play on a layup and foul. Two rebounds for the Meridianville native. A tray made by Maya Barnes, she's got three points, two rebounds, a steal, and two blocks in the first half. But uh, looking for more production on the offensive end in the following 20 minutes. Rachel Johnson, two points, two rebounds in the first half, and uh, two points, one rebound for Brianna Rhodes, who got into some foul trouble, had 2,003 minutes in the first quarter, we look forward to seeing more of her in the second half because, you know, as the team's leading scorer and rebounder, she can be a big difference maker. Jack State could definitely use those efforts in the second half of play. No points, but a couple of steals for Madison McCoy in the first half. One steal and one assist for Asia Barkley. And uh, that is what scoring looks like in the first half of play for Rick Petrie's team. For Louisiana Tech, leading scorer in this game is Robin Lee. She's got nine points and a couple of rebounds, also one assist and one steal in the first half of play. Eight points, four rebounds for Paris Guillory, the freshman for Louisiana Tech, who really didn't do much against Jack State in the first two meetings, but as you know, you throw that out the window when you get to tournament season. Four points, four rebounds for Gianna Morris, four points and a couple of rebounds for Anna Laura Robertson, who for the most part has been neutralized here in Huntsville. But a lot of game left to be played. Sylvia Nativi, two points, four rebounds, an assist, and two points for Amaya Brannon. She hit a long two late in the first half of play. Jacksonville State shooting seven of 33 from the field in the first half. That's 21%. Three of 15 from deep, 20%. They've made two of their three free throws. La Tech in the first half, 12 of 27, 44% from the field. Three of 10 from deep, 30%. They made both of their free throw opportunities. Jack State leading in points off turnovers six to two as they forced 11 turnovers, just turned it over eight times themselves. Uh, out rebounded 24-17 in the first half of play. 24 first half rebounds for La Tech. That's more rebounds than they had in the entire game in Jacksonville in the last meeting. La Tech though doing their damage close to the bucket. They've got 16 points in the paint, just eight for Jacksonville State. Gamecocks with eight second chance points. Lady Texters with two. Uh, La Tech with five, fat, five fast break opportunity points. Jack State with four fast break points. And the La Tech bench outproducing Jacksonville State's 10 to six in the first half. Jack State outscored 20 to six in the first, but then outscored the Lady Texters 13 to nine in the second half of play. We'll see if that trend can continue as Jacksonville State looks forward to what needs to be a very productive third period if they're going to keep their hopes alive of advancing to the semifinals. Again, the winner of this game will play tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. here in Huntsville against Middle Tennessee, the top-seeded Lady Raiders with a dominant 78-50 win over UTEP yesterday morning. They get today off, and they are in the arena scouting Jacksonville State and uh, scouting Louisiana Tech trying to see who they would play tomorrow. On the opposite side of things, Liberty held off Western Kentucky late. They will play the winner of FIU New Mexico State, which will come your way right after this one on ESPN Plus, a uh, 2 p.m. start time today. Those two teams will play in the other semifinal matchup at 8 p.m. tomorrow night here in Huntsville. Then, of course, the women's championship, 4.30 p.m. Saturday on CBS Sports Network. But that'll do it for our halftime coverage. The Gamecocks are back out onto the floor. Looking forward to, again, what needs to be a big third period for Jacksonville State if they're going to keep clawing into this deficit and keep their season alive. At the break, Louisiana Tech 29, Jacksonville State 19. Be back in five minutes with the start of the second half.
Back with you here in Huntsville as Neck plays on. Jacksonville State trails at halftime, 29 to 19 against Louisiana Tech here in the Conference USA quarterfinals. Gamecocks trailed by as many as 20 points in that first half. Really as many as 21. The trail 29 to nine before going on a 10-0 run to end the first half. And we will see if the red and white can continue that as we start the second half of play here in Huntsville. Inbounds pass, Nativi to Gianna Morris. And LaTeX got it as we are underway. Flares it to Robin Lee, the game's leading scorer, now in the corner to Nativi. Passes outside Robin Lee's direction. Salma Bates off a screen back to Lee right side. Passing all around, trying to find an open look. Eight on the shot clock, Lee drives in, jumper, got it. Stop jump, goes in from Lee. She's got double figures, 11 points, it's 31-19. Gamecocks down by a dozen once again. Brianna Rhodes back in the game, good to see her. Only three minutes in the first half. Has it near the bucket, tries a mid-range jumper, and it's off the rim. Back to Louisiana Tech. Lady Texters give it off to Lee. Steps into the paint, passes top of the key to Robinson. Falls down and throws it right to Crystal Eisen. A two on two, Crystal ahead to Elsie, layup, yes. And timeout called on the floor as Robinson got up very slow and she's limping through the Lady Texter bench. Elsie Harris with two more points. She's got eight for Jacksonville State. Back to a 10 point game a minute into the second half. Robertson losing her would be a huge blow if you're Louisiana Tech. And Brooke Storr over to the side with the trainer looking at her. Gianna Morris gets around two defenders, has it ripped at, passes back out to the lead, driving in against Johnson, layup short, got her own rebound, put back goes. Rachel Johnson over pursued for the layup, or for the rebound I should say, went over. And Petrie is livid right now. Should have been an easy defensive board, but instead it's a 12-point game. Crystal Ison, screen set by Rhodes, Euro step, pass out, Johnson three, too short. LaTeX gets it. Lee pushes it down the floor quickly to Nativi, but she stepped out of bounds. 8.13 to go in the third, Jacksonville State down 33-21. Elsie Harris down the far sideline. The Mississippi Gulf Coast transfer sets up on the left wing. Now she'll walk it to the right wing. Pass inside for McCoy. Now jumper from the elbow, Brianna Rhodes off the iron again. Jack State started poorly from the field in the first half. Can't afford to have that happen here. Morris outside in a TV. Now down low, McKenzie Worm. Jumper is blocked by Brianna Rhodes. She just blocked a 6-4 shot to Madison McCoy. Now to Elsie Harris. Gamecocks came away with it. Rachel Johnson to the right wing, it's Ison. Crystal sizes up the defender, gets around her, gives in the corner to Elsie. Harris drives, shot spins off to the right. And Harris trying to say there was a foul, but nothing called. Down the floor, open three for Bates, knocks it down. And the LaTeX crowd gets into it, 36-21. They lead by 15. 7-2 run for the Lady Texters coming out of halftime. Here's Elsie Harris on the left sideline. Gives it off to Rachel, looping around right. Gives in the corner, a three for Ison off the back of the rim. Caught by Johnson. Over to McCoy, almost lost it. Madison's layup is good, and she's fouled. Maddie McCoy fired up after the foul and a chance for a three-point play. 36-23. Kenzie Worm called for the foul and she'll jog off. They're gonna have to bring back in Kate Thompson as Anna Laura Robertson still getting checked out on the bench. They're looking at that left leg for her and they're pulling out the tape. Looks like she should be able to come back in as the free throw goes for Madison McCoy. Senior from the Volunteer State, 70% free throw shooter in the regular season makes another and LaTeX races down the floor. They miss a short jumper. Robin Lee can't get it to go. 
Jack State gets the board. Over to Rachel Johnson on the left wing. Now back outside to Elsie. In the paint, it's Rhodes driving, shot short, and rebounded by the Lady Texters. 36-24, La Tech leads it, 6.30 to play in quarter number three. Shot missed by Gianna Morris. Thompson with the rebound. Lost the ball, passes back out. Left wing, corner three. And a TV and a foul on the floor on Brianna Rhodes. That'll be her third. Bree called for a push, trying to get the rebound that time. Rhodes pleading her case, but she'll have to come out with foul number three. Still a 12-point lead for Louisiana Tech, who won by 14 and 10 in the regular season. 6.15 to go in the third. Jack State trying to get a stop here as Louisiana Tech's gonna throw it at the baseline. They find Brannon, jumper short, got around the defender but missed it, and then it's going to be out of bounds off La Tech. Madison McCoy, who collided with a ref going for that rebound, will throw it in to Elsie Harris. Swap sides of the floor as she brings it up. Passes on the wing, Maya Barnes a three, had to have it, she got it. 36-27. Second tray of the day for Maya. Jacksonville State down just nine now. Closest it's been since pretty early in the first half. Morris swings it in the corner. Salma Bates. Montec feeling a bit of the pressure perhaps. Guillory driving against Ison. Layup spins in. Hung up on the back of the rim and fell. 38-27. Harris walks it to the left wing, crosses back to the right. She'll pass to an open Barnes. Didn't take this shot. Instead, she'll give to McCoy. Madison, right side to Ison. Crystal straight away, steps it to the free throw line. Sets a screen for McCoy, her three, nowhere near it, and out of bounds. Goes into the Jacksonville State cheerleaders with 5.03 remaining here in the third quarter. Gamecocks down 11. Either side throwing haymakers here early in the second half. But Jack State being outscored by a point. Morris to Guillory on the left side. The screen from Thompson. Guillory to the charity stripe. Has to pass out, defense right on top of her. Gianna Morris gets it in the corner. Flares one on the wing for Bates, back to Morris. Down low, this is Amaya Brannon. Five on the shot clock. Layup off the side of the rim, or off the side of the backboard, I should say. Jack State boxes out. It's Ison all the way. Layup in and out. Rebounded by Rachel. I don't know how she got it. Two Lady Texters touched it. Pass behind her back to Barnes, a three. The Gamecocks cut into the deficit again. It's an eight-point game, 38-30. They push the floor quickly, does La Tech. Paris Guillory, left side, gives it to an open Bates. Now on the right sideline, this is Morris in the corner to Brannon. Passing around, but nowhere to go. Now 10 on the clock. Bates to Guillory, tries a three off the rim and rebounded by Maya. She was fouled, nothing called, ahead to Ison. Gamecocks don't have numbers, but Kristen tries to jump her, and Crystal hits it. It's a two-possession game, 38-32, and timeout is taken by La Tech. Jacksonville State again firing up this crowd in the Yellowhammer State. Another nice run for the Gamecocks, and they trail it by just six here midway through the third quarter. Officially 3.37 to go as we hit the timeout. We'll step aside with them. Gamecocks down 38-32.
Coming back to play with 3.37 to go here in the third quarter. After that media timeout, Jacksonville State trails by just six, 38 to 32. Here in a lively Probst Arena in Huntsville. Two solid crowds and of course, the two teams that are set to play next already making their way out. New Mexico State and FIU taking in this quarterfinal matchup. Winner of this game has a date tomorrow night with top seeded Middle Tennessee. But who will it be? Jacksonville State putting some pressure on La Tech. Trying to get another stop here as the Lady Texters give it to Paris Guillory who catches it on the right wing. Outside to the left side, it's Gianna Morris. Morris to Bates straight away. Bates sidesteps the defender. This La Tech team's made just one of their last seven shots. Bates down low, it's tipped and stolen. Crystal Ison comes away with the ball. Gets around the defender, she cooked her, and the layup's good. 38-34, Crystal Ison with a heck of a move. Robin Lee, and she traveled. Going back the other way. Under three minutes to go here in the third, and all the momentum going toward the Gamecocks. And another timeout taken on the floor. It's a full timeout, but we'll keep it here. 2.58 remaining in the third. Jacksonville State down by just four now. Getting closer and closer here in the second half. Gamecocks are outscoring the Lady Texters 15 to nine here in the third. Taking another look at games going on right now in women's basketball action. Now, Alcorn State leading Southern Louisiana 54 to 48. Maryland Eastern Shore still trailing Coppin State. They've got about three and a half minutes left. That's in the MEAC tournament, 55-44. CAA Championship, Campbell and Elon, minute 40 remaining. Campbell 57, Elon 45. In the Missouri Valley Tournament, it's halftime. Indiana State on top of their in-state foes, Southern Illinois 33-23. And halftime in the MAAC Championship quarterfinal, Siena 39, Mount St. Mary's 21. Go goes on the floor and hardcore playing along. Red and white draped across the stands here at Probst Arena. And the Gamecocks cutting into the deficit, feeling like a good morning right now. Still time left for Jack State to turn it around. Again, they led by as many, or trailed by as many as 21 in this game. Gamecocks have not led since it was 2-0 a minute in. A 7-0 scoring run here over the last minute and a half for the Jack State Gamecocks. And Rick Petrie's team still in the huddle on the far side of the floor, talking it over in this timeout. Big thank you to everybody listening in on this Thursday afternoon, started morning, now afternoon, here in Huntsville. Logan Maddox with you on the Gamecock Sports Network. It's been a pleasure being on the call all season long. Remember, if you would like to watch today's game, it is streaming live on ESPN+. Plus. Rocket City hoops all week long. Catch the entire Conference USA men's and women's basketball championships on the ESPN family and networks. ESPN Plus for all the semifinal and quarterfinal matchups today and tomorrow, and then the two championships on Saturday on CBS Sports Network. Gamecocks trying to punch their ticket to the semifinals. Jack State went to the A-Sun semifinals and then the finals in 21-22. Prior to that, it had been a few years since they made a run. For Louisiana Tech, a team that lost in this CUSA tournament last year. It was out in Frisco, but they qualified for the postseason. I think they played in the WBI. This is an experienced La Tech team and their star senior, Annalar Robertson, back in the game after tweaking her leg earlier. We'll see if she's 100%. Gamecock ball 
a 7-0 run, and Elsie Harris is going to throw it in with under three to play. Harris grabs it from a teammate, passes off to Maya Barnes. Straight away, this is Madison McCoy. She's tripped, and that's a hard tumble for the senior forward. She gets up very gingerly. An inadvertent foul there. Petrie looks on to the veteran leader and says, are you all right? She nods her head. So the Gamecocks will throw it in here with 2.44 left. They're going to call time and wipe up some sweat off the floor. Rachel Johnson will be the passer on the sideline. McCoy shows no signs of injury. Goes in to Maya Barnes, three off the pass, in and out. Rebounded by nobody. It's a scramble for it, and they come crashing into the table. Well, first time for that, but we didn't lose our water, so it's all right. Jacksonville State kept it. Maya Barnes came crashing in, threw it off the Lady Texter. Didn't hit the laptop. That went as good as it could have for Jack State. Elsie Harris on the left side. And it's stolen. No, a foul on the floor on La Tech. Paris Guillory tripped up Elsie. She got the ball initially, but then tried to dive for it and got caught with the red shirt junior. Two and a half to play here in the third quarter. Harris gives it in to Rachel Johnson and it's stolen. Just ripped away that time. Good play by Morris. Over to the TV, and here come the Lady Texters. Down the floor, and they throw it out of bounds. They sail it into the cheerleaders. Sylvia Nativi tried a bit too much. Gamecocks trailing by just four, 38-34. But if you're just joining us, La Tech led by as many as 21. Elsie Harris gets a screen, stops on the wing, passes down low for McCoy, scramble for it. Over to Rachel Johnson, a three in the corner, no good. And then out of bounds off Jack State. Maya Barnes stepped out the back line trying to get that board. It's a heck of a job by Madison McCoy just to save it. I thought it was going to be stolen. Somehow she dove on the ball and passed it to Rachel even though she missed the three. Under two to play here in the third. Jack State down four. Gianna Morris gets a handoff. Races around right side. Defender falls down to a wide open to TV. Races in, layup no good, and rebounded by McCoy. Here comes Madison, ahead to Johnson, and she is blocked. Deanna Morris tripped her up that time. And that'll be team foul number four, I believe, on Louisiana Tech. Minute 41 to go in the period. Jacksonville State, a foul away from the bonus, down by four. Harris passes to Ison in the corner. Now all the way around the horn, back to Elsie on the right wing. Top of the key, it's Ison. 16 on the shot clock. Crystal gets a screen, goes to the right. Passes in the corner to Harris. Elsie back in the corner, Ison's way, fakes a three, drives in, layup. Falls off the rim, but the putback is, oh, it's no good. I thought it would go in too, silly me. Maya Barnes put back, missed off the rim, and then a foul on the opposite end as Madison McCoy tries to strip it away from a lady texter. And Petrie still asking for a foul on the opposite end. That is the second foul on Jacksonville State. Foul number one on McCoy. Inbounds is caught by Salma Bates at half court. 107 to go in this third quarter. Jack State down 38-34. La Tech ball. Morris in the paint. She'll spin back around and dribble it out. They pass inside Analar Robertson. And they call a shooting foul on Maya Barnes. She tried to block Robertson, but instead she sends her to the free throw line as they look to end a 7-0 run and a four and a half minute scoreless drought. Robertson, who dominated Jack State in the first two meetings this year, has just four points right now. First trip to the line for the Ruston native. And she misses it. 
80% free throw shooter in the regular season. Misses the first one with 55 seconds to go in this third quarter. Gamecocks again down just four. Robertson makes it a five-point game, 39-34. Elsie Harris brings it up. 50 seconds to play. Harris throws it right to a lady texter. Salma Bates stepped in the way of that ball. Grabs it, passes over to Gianna Morris as they pass the timeline. In the corner, she'll find Lee, now in a TV. Left corner, it's Bates. A bounce pass for Robertson in the paint, layup. No good, but yet another shooting foul on the Gamecocks. Not sure who they got for the foul that time. As they show the replay, it was Maya Barnes. No, yeah, Maya Barnes, who was on her and must have just gotten her hand as she tried for that jump shot. Barnes has to come out. Maya collects her second personal. Robertson makes the first one this time, and it's 40 to 34. Second from the 6'3 senior is in there. Touchdown ball game, 41-34, with 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Shot clock is off. They give it in to Elsie Harris. She's pressured right away by Morris. A screen set by Barkley. She'll cross half court. Elsie standing near the stripe. 18 to go. Passes on the wing for Barkley. Asia spins inside. Walks it over. Moving around the teammates. Hands it off to Harris. Elsie tripped up. Now to Barkley. Fakes a shot. She'll drive. Layup blocked. But a foul on Mackenzie Worm. 3.3 seconds to play in the period and two free throws coming up for Asia Barkley. Barkley 0 for 2 from the field today, no free throws. The junior who transferred in from Shelton State Community College this season is a 68% free throw shooter. The first one from the former Aniston Bulldog is good. Nothing but net at 41-35. Second free throw from Barkley. Knocks them both down. A five point game once again as Brooklyn McDaniel checks in for Madison McCoy. She'll get a few seconds to breathe before we start the fourth. La Tech running in unique inbound passing situation. They give it in to Morris. A heave at the horn is well short. And we head to the fourth period. Jacksonville State cuts the deficit in half in the third. And it's a five-point game as we head to the final stanza in Huntsville. Survive in advance or look ahead to next year. What will be the story in the fourth quarter? We'll find out in just a bit. Jacksonville State trails it 41-36 as we head to the fourth.
Start of the fourth quarter here in the Rocket City. Jacksonville State Trails La Tech 41-36 as we start the fourth and final period here in this CUSA quarterfinal matchup. Season on the line for both of these teams. Inbounds pass goes to Samaya Steele who will start at point guard here in the fourth quarter. Gives over to Asia Barkley. Driving into the paint, Barkley has to pass away. Nowhere to go. She'll give at the last moment to Ison on the wing. Crystal walks it to the elbow now to the free throw line. Guarded tightly by Guillory. Ison retreats, five on the shot clock. Jumps in, layup, off to the left. And rebounded by Robertson, who might have got away with a the travel there. 30 seconds into this fourth quarter, Louisiana Tech trying to open the scoring. As they find Guillory straight away. Down low to Robertson, expect the offense to go through her here in the fourth. Robertson, layup, well short and no good. Great defense by Asia Barkley was all over. Samaya Steele in the corner, a three for McDaniel. Too much on it. Rebound taken by Louisiana Tech's Gianna Morris. Ahead to Sylvia Nativi, one defender to beat. And they call a block on Samaya Steele. Sylvia Nativi just two points today. No trips to the free throw line and a season 56% shooter at the stripe. will head to the line in a big situation early in this fourth quarter. Five point lead for the Lady Texters. Trying to add to it the junior from Italy. Makes the first, 42-36. Trying to extend it to a three possession lead and she will. Fell in off the glass. 43-36 with 8.50 to go. Here comes Samaya Steele standing right in front of the broadcast table. Gianna Morris guarding. She'll bounce a pass to McDaniel. Now to Rachel Johnson on the left wing. Crystal Ison looping around, stops near the elbow. Now she'll back it up. The TV guarding goes in the corner for McDaniel. Brooklyn to the baseline, she'll find Barkley. Asia, five on the shot clock, layup, rolls off the rim. Didn't get the right angle that time. Robertson got the rebound. Down the floor to Guillory on the wing. She'll wait for the rest of the offense to catch up. It's Gianna Morris who gets it near the half court strike. Robin Lee hands it off to Morris. To the right side, now beyond the arc. Down low, they lead a pass for Robertson. Jumper goes in over Barkley. Just can't have that, 45-36. And timeout on the floor taken by Jacksonville State. 7.55 remaining, Gamecocks trail it by nine. 45-36, stay with us here on the Gamecocks Sports Network.
Rachel Johnson passes it in to Samaya Steele, and we're back underway here in Huntsville. Under eight minutes left in this Conference USA quarterfinal matchup. Gamecocks and Lady Texters. Jack State down by nine, but make it seven as Maya Barnes drives in on the right side and lays it in easily off the glass, 45-38. And a good response right out of the timeout. Now you need to stop, though, with seven and a half remaining. It's Gianna Morris stepping to the right wing. Back down low, tipped and intercepted. Maya Barnes had a hand on it over to Shaquise May. She'll slow it down and give to Samaya on the wing for three. Oh, air balled out of bounds. Not the right look that time. That shot there would have been huge for the Gamecocks. And instead, it's a turnover after a missed shot. And back to the Lady Textures and Gianna Morris. Tenth turnover of the day for Jacksonville State. 17 for the Lady Texters. Salma Bates swings at top of the key to Gianna Morris. Double team. She has to pass it off to Bates. In the corner, Nativi's wide open for three, but she's well short. Madison McCoy collects the board. Brings it up the center of the court. She'll stop. At the three-point line, fouled, nothing called. Over to Barnes on the wing. Barnes spins twice, now passes back out to McCoy. To Steele on the right side. Back left side, Barnes a three, got it! And a foul on the floor at the end of the play. We'll keep it with Jacksonville State. So count the basket and the Gamecocks will have the ball. Shaquise May was bulldozed. As she tried to get the rebound, I would assume it'd be Gamecock ball, but instead they're just going to give it to La Tech. No, now they're swapping it over, and it is Jack State ball. Costly series of events there for the Lady Texters. Jack State down just four now, and they've got the ball, trying to make it a one-possession game with a score. It goes into Shaquise May on the right side. Steps around a defender, gives to Barnes on the right wing this time. In the corner, it's Steele. Samaya looping around to the elbow. Back outside to Maya. Barnes in the paint, spins, spins again, layup. Off to the right. Couldn't fall that time. 45-41, La Tech leads it, 6.13 to go. Driving down lows to TV, she passes it to Robertson. Excuse me, Roberson, and she is bumped into. And that foul goes against Madison McCoy. McCoy was on a different Lady Texter, she came over for help defensively and collided with the senior. And it goes to Salma Bates, layup goes. She just got around Maya Barnes, nothing to it that time. Six point game, 47-41. Samaya Steele. Here on the near side, she'll walk it to the left wing. Over to Barnes on the right sideline, and it's kicked out of bounds by Annalar Robertson. Jaquise May will throw it in. She finds Samaya Steele. Steele guarded immediately by Morris. Screen from Barnes gets her around Morris. Tosses in the corner for May, tries a three, makes the three. And it's a one possession game, 47-42. La Tech led by as many as 21 in this game. Jack State's cut it to a three point difference. Salma Bates beyond the arc, gives to Nativi straight away all the pressure on La Tech right now. Passes off to Morris, driving down low, kicks it in the corner, open three for Bates, and a foul at the end of the play on Shaquise May. Shot was no good, but she'll get three opportunities at the charity strike. First foul, but a tough one on Shaquise May. Salma Bates gets up very slowly as she took a ton of contact as Shaquise May ran into her. She was in midair. Bates with five points. Two of five from the field. 
First time at the line today, though, for Bates, who is a 76% free throw shooter. And the first one goes in. 48-44. Five oh six left in this game. And Bates hits the first two. 49-44. The third and final free throw from Salma Bates. She hits every one of them. Six point game, 50-44. Crystal Ison crosses half court. Screen from Barnes, Ison on the wing, gives off to May, another three, too short this time, but the putback is good, and a foul. Maya Barnes grabs it off the glass and puts it in for two more. Barnes has taken over in this second half. She's got 19 points. It's two away from a career high, and she's got a chance for one more at the line here. Barnes with 19 and five in this game. Taking over when the Gamecocks need her the most. And she makes, no, does not make the free throw. It falls off the rim. Robertson hands it off to Gianna Morris. Here come the Lady Texters up the court. 440 to go in this ball game. Gamecocks down by four, 50 to 46. And what has turned into a slugfest here in the quarterfinals. In the corner and a TV down low, Roberson. Layup blocked by Barnes again. And a foul on La Tech trying to get the rebound. And that is the fourth team foul on the Lady Texters. Correction, just the third team foul. Three team fouls apiece here in the final period. That was the fourth foul, however, on Robin Lee, who has to check out for Anya Bukovic. Crystal Ison running point this possession for Jacksonville State. She'll stop on the right side. Gives to Barnes again, another three off to the right, but she gets her own rebound, passes out to McCoy. Needs some points this possession. Down by four with four minutes left. Ison straight away. Gives in the corner to Shaquise May with six on the shot clock. Layup, nowhere near it. Just nowhere near it, no foul. And Louisiana Tech gets the rebound. Then a block at half court on Ison. Not sure what Crystal was trying to do that time. And time called as Shaquise May is still down on the court. 3.54 remaining, Jacksonville State down by four, 50 to 46. And we are gonna step aside as Shaquise May has attended to. Shaquise May makes her way to the sideline. She's getting checked out by the trainer, Devine Mathis. Jacksonville State down 50-46. 3.50 remaining, La Tech basketball. Robertson straight away, swings right side for Nativi. 15 on the shot clock. It's tipped, almost stolen, some Aya Steele. And now a foul on Rachel Johnson as she dove in trying to get the loose ball. And that puts La Tech in the bonus for the final 3.39. Samaya Steele jumped a pass initially, got a hand on it. The two players raced back toward midcourt for it. And then just as Gianna Morris picked it up, Rachel Johnson came diving in and kind of shoulder checked her. So free throws now for Morris, who will try to extend it to a six point lead, makes the first one. Shaquise May still being looked at on the on the visiting bench. Morris makes both, 52-46. Three and a half to play in Huntsville. 
Gamecocks down by six. Crystal Ison takes it to the baseline. Layup was blocked. Morris got a hand on it. Louisiana Tech comes away with it. Morris on the right side. And a timeout taken by the Lady Texters. That was tough. That was tough. No way around it. Crystal Ison had a good look, but Morris elevated at the right time. Got a hand on the ball. As hardcore plays away, we'll step aside. 318 remaining. Jack State down 52-46 in the quarterfinals. Louisiana Tech basketball, they lead it by six with 3.18 remaining. Inbounds pass goes to Gianna Morris. Freshman from Arkansas, guarded tightly by Ison. Passes right wing for Bates, now in the corner to Guillory. Back outside to Morris. They're trying to drain some clock, and they will. Three seconds to go on the clock, and then a foul called as Crystal Ison blocks her in the lane. Crystal Ison lost her footing and tripped up. Deanna Morris, who will head back to the line for two more. She's got six points, but is a perfect four for four at the line in this game. First one, she sinks it. It's a seven point game, 53-46. Jack State cut it to as close as three. But since then, La Tech has been able to pull back away Making an eight point difference, 54-46. They're pressing on the inbound, Samaya still gets it up. Crystal Ison catches it on the wing, needs somebody to take over here. Ison's layup, no good, but she draws a foul on Sylvia Nativi. So two opportunities at the line for Ison, who is one for two there so far. Seven points and five rebounds for the junior. 2.52 remaining and an eight point lead for La Tech. First one good for Ison. First points in about two minutes for Jacksonville State. Crystal hits both and it's back to a six point game. Lady Texters bringing everybody down as Jacksonville State is pressing. Give it in to Salma Bates. The team captain dumps it off to Morris and they cross half court. Morris stops on the wing, step for step with Ison. Passes left side for Nativi. Now to Bates, top of the key. On the right wing, it's Morris back over to Bates. Morris driving baseline, open look, layup no good and rebounded by Madison McCoy. 2.20 left, need some points here. Elsie Harris spins in the paint back outside to Maya. Barnes is called for a charge. She sent Robertson spiraling to the deck and Petrie looks in and says, that's a good call. I'm not mad at you, that's a good call. Nativi gives in to Guillory with 2.10 left. They lead by six. Morris past half court. You have got to get a stop here. It can be no more than a two possession game. Nativi on the wing. McCoy in front of her. Gives straight away to Salma Bates. Now onto the left wing, it's Morris. Down low to Roberson but a push away from the play is going to have free throws with 148 left. Hey, 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 
Two for Paris Guillory here. Guillory with 10 points, but this is her first time at the line. And her first free throw is good. 148 remaining, a three possession game. Hits both, 56-48. We saw Sam Houston rally to force overtime Saturday on senior day. Can Jack State do the same? Elsie Harris on the left wing. Give straight away to Maya Barnes. She'll step it into the wing, or into the paint. Now into the corner, it's Madison McCoy, lay up. No good, but she's fouled. Gamecock's not going away without a fight. Here with 132 left. Two more free throws for McCoy, who's got three points. Made her only free throw earlier. First free throw from Madison. Is no good, rolls to the back and falls off. The senior's second free throw is good. 56-49. 132 remaining. Jacksonville State, 8 of 11 on free throws. LaTeX, 16 of 17. Gianna Morris passes half court. Elsie Harris right on her. Has to pass over to Guillory. Now back over to Morris. Walks to the right side. 10 on the shot clock. She falls to the floor. And timeout taken by Louisiana Tech. Both teams in the bonus here with 111 left. No foul that time, and smart play by La Tech as she fell down. You know, potentially a chance for a steal. Maybe a travel, but instead they call time and they keep possession. Again, a big thank you to everybody joining us here on the Gamecock Sports Network today and all season long. Jack State trying to continue this season with 1-11 remaining. Down 56 to 49 here in the quarterfinals against Louisiana Tech, who has led since it was 2-0 Jack State. La Tech led by as many as 21. Jack State cut it to a one possession difference, but could not close the gap. There's still some time left. We'll see what they can do with it. Silvina TV will throw it in for La Tech with nine on the shot clock. The give is to the freshman Guillory. Now to classmate Gianna Morris on the wing. She'll back it up. Two on the clock, launches a three off to the right, but rebounded by them. And Morris will not get fouled yet. Now she gets fouled with 54 to go. Time winding down, under a minute to go, and some free throws that might not necessarily ice it, but we'll get pretty close to that for Gianna Morris here. First one in there, 57-49. Morris, a perfect seven for seven at the line. And she makes it eight for eight. A full three possession game, a nine point difference, 58-49. Elsie Harris takes it to the top of the key. Passes to McCoy on the left wing. Now May, or Maya Barnes, top of the key, three goes. And a full timeout for Jacksonville State. So that does cut it to a two possession difference, 58-52 with 45 seconds remaining. Jacksonville State will have a chance.
Remember, the winner of this game will advance to the semifinal round tomorrow where they will play Middle Tennessee. That game will start at 5.30 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. The championship is Saturday at 4.30 on CBS Sports Network. The next game, another quarterfinal matchup, FIU and New Mexico State will tip off at 2 o'clock on ESPN+. Plus. The winner of that will face Liberty, who's already waiting in the semifinals at 8 p.m. Friday. Forty-five point five seconds left. LaTeX fifty-eight, Jack State fifty-two. Five-seeded Gamecocks had a heck of a second half in conference play, winning six of their last ten to qualify as the fifth team in this tournament. But LaTeX's been a tough draw for them all year. The TV passes it in to Roberson. She's double teamed and it's ripped out of her hands. Jump ball is forced, it'll stay with La Tech for now. Nativi gonna throw it in again here for the Lady Texters. She'll find Morris who is fouled immediately by Harris. And Petrie is livid on the sideline. Forty-one point five seconds to go. Doesn't burn off much time, but what you did is you just sent the best free throw shooter this side of the Mississippi back to the line. And Gianna Morris, she's eight for eight today. I mean, foul anybody else. Unsurprisingly, she makes the first one. 59-52. By the way, it was the second foul on Elsie Harris. The second free throw from Gianna Morris is true. She is 10 for 10 at the line, and that is pretty much the difference in this eight-point game, 60-52. Crystal Ison takes it all the way coast to coast. Layup's good. Just burned a few seconds off, 60-54. Now you need to stop, it goes into Morris. Gets around the first wave, passes off, and it's caught by Guillory, they break the press. They pass half court. Now to Morris, no ahead to Salma Bates, and she's fouled by Madison McCoy with 24.1 left in this game. So two free throws for Salma Bates now, who's got eight points, three for three at the line. While that is good, it's not 10 for 10. As a team, they're 20 for 21 on free throws. And they finally miss. Off to the left from Bates. Madison McCoy picked up her fourth foul. Bates misses both, but it's gonna be out of bounds off Jacksonville State. It went to the hands of Nativi and was poked out by Ison. 22.4 to play. And Louisiana Tech calls time as they are set to pass it in here. Louisiana Tech 60, Jacksonville State 54. If this score holds, the Gamecocks would finish the season at 12 and 17. But all in all, a strong showing their first year in Conference USA, seven and nine in league action. Finished tied for fourth in the conference in a tough women's basketball league. Still time though. 22.4, but you need some misses at the line, and Jack State needs some makes from deep.
Louisiana Tech still in their huddle. Jacksonville State just going over how quickly to foul with the shot clock off for the remainder of this game. Who can foul, who can't? Madison McCoy with four. Crystal Ison, Maya Barnes, and Rachel Johnson with three. Elsie Harris with two fouls right now. Again, if you're just joining us, Jacksonville State led early 2-0. Since then, Louisiana Tech has led consistently throughout this game. Jack State trailed by as many as 21 in the first half. Cut it to a three-point game, but as of now, just unable to bridge this gap. We'll see if it changes over the last few seconds. Two point four left, and the officials checking out something on the replay. And it is going to be Gamecock ball. So Jack State thankful that they took another look at it. So Jack State ball down six. Twenty two seconds left. Feels a whole lot better than the other way around. Madison McCoy throws it in to Crystal Ison. She brings it up in a hurry. Crystal stops at the wing, walks it to the right side, hands it off to Elsie, almost stolen, 13 seconds to go, got to shoot it. Over to Barnes, left wing. Now to Rachel, puts up a three. Too short off the rim. Tipped and rebounded by McCoy, three seconds left. Tries a layup, it's blocked, and this game is over. And the season comes to an end in the quarterfinals. Jacksonville State falls 60 to 54 to La Tech. Good effort by Jack State down the stretch. They make it close, but cannot top the Lady Texters here in Huntsville. And they fall in all three showdowns with Louisiana Tech this season. Tough way to end what's been an up and down year for the Gamecocks. And both Jacksonville State basketball teams go 0-1 here in Huntsville. We'll see if we have a chance to chat with head coach Rick Petrie here in post game. But uh, Jacksonville State falls in the CUSA quarter 60-254. Don't believe we'll have a chance to speak with him. I believe it'll be the post-game press conference. So we will head that way. We thank everybody for tuning in this season all year long on the Gamecock Sports Network. It has been a pleasure, and we appreciate you following along with Gamecock women's basketball along with us. Maya Barnes finishes with a career-high 22 points and seven rebounds here in the quarterfinals. Crystal Ison, 11 points, five rebounds. Eight points for Elsie Harris, but not enough for Jack State. They lose by six here in the conference tournament. We will talk to you next time. For everybody with Jacksonville State Athletics, everybody with Jack State Women's Basketball, Logan Maddox signing off. Your final score in Huntsville, Louisiana Tech 60, Jack State 54.